You gonna sit up here on my platform and tell me that Soldier Boy wasn't first. No, Soldier Boy ain't thought of. <laughs> Soldier Boy wasn't the first one to do it. I mean, Soldier Boy ain't thought of. So, but Soldier Boy got the whole swag from Bankhead. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I don't even think he ever been to Pool Palace before. Damn, that's crazy. So y'all came out before D4L? Yeah. Came out for everybody. We had White T, or I think they like me, and lean with it, rock with it. Before anybody from my side of town, anybody you ever heard of from the Snap era had one song. We had three. Damn. Before anybody had one song, I was there. I was there when D4L D4 was from my projects. Shotty Lowe's from my projects. I grew up watching Shotty Lowe. Shotty Lowe was like the Frank <clears throat> Lucas's of my project. You see Bro. what I'm saying? So I played basketball. I knew it trapped against Lowe. Like, I've been knowing Lowe since I've been a youngin'. You see what I'm saying? So this ain't nothing new. I know Lowe personally. You see what I'm saying? He grew, I grew up watching this. Shop boys are from our project. We grew up with each other. You see what I'm saying? Like, these ain't no niggas who I just, like, I've been knowing these niggas. I know their mama, their daddy, their sister, brother, who they had a baby with. I, all this shit. Like, this ain't no rap shit. Yo, what's poppin'? It's your boy, Mr. J. Hill, and welcome to another episode of the J. Hill Podcast. But right now, I want to give a special thank you and shout out to our sponsor, that's Top Dog Law. So look, man, if you're suffering from medical malpractice, a slip and fall, especially a car accident, make sure you call my guy Top Dog Law. That's Top Dog Law on Instagram and topdoglaw.com. Look, if you check out his Instagram, you'll see he uploading big checks. I mean, like every day. I ain't talking about the little ones. The big ones. So shout out to my guy, Top Dog Law, topdoglaw.com. Get that money. I know I'm trying to get it. Let's get it popping, man. Yes, sir, Ski. Yeah. Uh, Mr. J Hill, J Hill Podcast. We're in the building. Uh, every episode gets better. We're coming towards the end of the year, and the shit just don't stop. Um, this guy next to me, I mean, you talking about Atlanta, and you want to know something about Atlanta, who better to tell it than this guy? You heard me. Um, legendary, and I just been keep just getting legends on a, on a, um on the podcast, and I don't really care about how other people perceive them because we gonna get their roses in real life. When we talking about the word right, my but my man Dylan going block that out anyway because we still early. Um, we talk about legends and um people not getting their roses, but I want to get his man his roses because I mean he was a part of creating a movement. That made made it fun when we talking about hip hop. When everybody wanted to be gangsters and shoot them up, kill, kill, and bang, bang, he created something to be fun. When in all actuality, that wasn't even what this nigga was about. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, that wasn't even him. I'm doing my research. I'm like, oh, <laughs> he wasn't no snap, block it, pop it. He was a street. <laughs> what was he doing doing this? <laughs> Man, I got Parlay in the building. Uh, somebody who has now recreated himself, right? He has a podcast, a very successful podcast. So it, it went from recreation of three times, and that's just three ways that I know, right? Because I'm pretty sure there's so many other things that he do that I'm probably not even uh, aware of. We're going to get into it on this episode. Um, Parlay, what up, brother? I appreciate you pulling up, dog. Appreciate you having me here, dog. Nah, man. Um, you know what's funny? What's going on? I'm pretty sure most people, well, mm -hmm. new viewers probably would have a similar sentiment to me. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know you was a part of the franchise, boys. To a lot of people said that. <laughs> like, I didn't even. Yeah. I just, I got on to you because of the podcast. Mm -hmm. I had no, I just thought you were just like some Atlanta, just like on some historian type. Like just yeah. you was just the Atlanta. So when you talking these Atlanta stories, uh -huh. I'm like, damn, I'm not gonna lie. I be looking at just, and I be like, yeah, I'm gonna stay in my lane because some conversations I'm just not qualified to have. <laughs> just on some respectful, because yeah, like I be looking yeah. at just, and I'm like, bro, I couldn't even tell you about old Atlanta or in the cuss or what. Like you be you be talking some Atlanta. From here, it's different. I'm from here. You know, it's a, um, when it comes to the city. When people speak of the old Atlanta, they'll talk about the city of Atlanta. Mm. When people speak of Atlanta now, they talk about Metro Atlanta. Mm. That's where the confusion come in. At. You know what I'm saying? I was born on the east side of Atlanta, 
And I was raised on the west side of Atlanta. Mm. So I got the chance to experience both sides and really understand it. And then I was raised in probably, well, I can't say probably, the, it is the hardest projects in East Atlanta was East Lake Meadows. You know what I'm saying? I got a chance to grow up over there. You know what I'm saying? Leaving from there, I end up moving to Born Home on the west side. And Born Home is probably the worst projects on the west side. You see what I'm saying? Respectfully. You know what I'm saying? So I got a chance to be around. You know, when I was when I was like nine years old, bro, I used to catch the bus from the end of the west side to the east side. I used to go downtown. I'm like nine years old, 10 years old. So mm -hmm. I got a chance to experience the city. You know what I'm saying? I know people from everywhere, so there ain't too many places I ain't been or too many shit I ain't seen. And I was outside. What's the... What's, I'm just curious. What's the biggest difference? Because we hear we hear this term get thrown around so much. Old Atlanta, mm -hmm. New Atlanta, and and for the most part, again, as a tourist, I don't know no no better. What I've come to learn was really the Olympics. Mm -hmm. When you're talking about Old Atlanta, New Atlanta, but being somebody from Atlanta, what's the biggest difference for for you outside of the Olympics? Uh, or no, was that really yeah, that it? You don't got no projects no more. <clears throat> uh, you really don't got no projects. No. All the projects really gone. All the projects they have rebuilt ain't projects no more. So that's one because in the projects you got a sense of you got everything that you needed in in one circle. Uh, morals, what they call the G code principles, mm -hmm. everything was different. It was real. When no fabricated. When nobody doing this. Like back then, if somebody was rapping about selling dope on their music, they were selling dope for real. Right. If they were talking about pimping on their music. It was pimping for real. Wasn't well, nobody fabricating their music. When we didn't get fabrication. But growing up in the project, you got a chance to experience whatever you wanted to growing up. So I spent like this. In my projects in Born Home, we had a grocery store, two gas stations, a car uh a clothing washing, uh clothes washing thing with a restaurant. Barbershop, music store, mechanic shop, elementary school, medical center, uh, a center with, with a stage, like if you want to have a, a show or something like that in it, mm -hmm. uh, football field, a recre park recreation, all in my projects. Mm -hmm. You didn't hear what I said? Everything I just said in my projects. You had it in the projects. In my projects. Oh, that's different. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. I didn't have we didn't have to leave my projects for nothing. Wait, is it in the projects or in that neighborhood? Because we projects. had all of that, but it wasn't in, like in the projects. In the projects. All right, so listen. I, that's what I'm saying. How like I explain. It's just to this day, right down Bankhead. All right, Born Home is like so. If you if you coming from 285, you pass the flame. My project is gonna be on the left. Mm -hmm. But if you are coming from down from 28 down Bankhead, it's gonna be on the right. So if you coming down, I just explain coming down from the right. As soon as you pull up. It's a red light right here, and it's my projects. To the left is a mechanic shop, a record store, a hair salon, barbershop. Mm -hmm. On the side of the street from there is a gas station. Across the street from that, where my projects at, it's another gas station. Across from that is a grocery store. On the side of that, on the side of that gas station, it's a mom and pop um, um, cooking cooking shop. Then it's the it's the um, clothing um, laundromat and it's a restaurant. So when you pull in my projects, the the library right here to the right. You make it right, you go all the way down. You go to elementary school to the right. You got the medic center to the left. You got the um, the uh, event center to the left. Then right behind the school, that's the that's the uh, A.D. Williams. It's A.D. That's, that's the name of my elementary school, A.D. Williams. You got A.D. Williams, the park, which is a pile now. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Where they do the boxing and all that. All this is in my projects. You know, I guess I'm what, what confused me because, like, I'm from the projects, too, in Baltimore. Mm -hmm. But, like, we never, like, I would never say, like, the grocery store was in the project, but now that I'm thinking about it, like, the grocery store was right next to the projects. Like, mm -hmm. the projects is right here, and, like, I mean, it damn near inside the, damn near, yeah. Mm -hmm. My elementary school, I went to uh, Fremont L. Templeton, it's literally, like, like, literally right there. Like, the projects right here is right across the street, and the, um, we had a pal, too. I thought they, 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 they stopped that. They stopped funding that. No, they still do pal. They still do the pal? I thought they, they ain't do that no they more. They still do pal down here, too. Yo, they got one of Anderson Park. Um, Anderson Park, got, they got that pile at Anderson Park. They must have stopped it up north. It ain't as big as it used to be, but they they still got it, though. It's crazy because the Pal Center, as much as it saved a lot of kids' lives, it got a lot of ass whooped. But you know what? We didn't have... <laughs> like, we didn't
have, had the ass whooped at the pound center. But we didn't have pound growing up. Pound For was real? something that yeah, pound something that came later. We always had recreation parks, and we all everybody always go play the recreation. But like yeah. I told you, our recreation park was <laughs> in our project. Yeah, yeah. Like nobody drove to practice. Yeah, that's how. Yeah, that's how. Ain't no drive to practice. Ain't no walk to practice. Yeah, you know, we walk to school. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. ain't no ain't, ain't no buses. Yeah, like we don't got no buses. Mm. Ain't no if you rode buses to my if you rode buses in my project, that means you stayed in the houses across the street from our project called King Grant. And you was a suburb. Mm. And we picked on y'all. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So, so and then, so, like I said, well, when you was raising up, you got a chance to see the car thieves. Mm. You got a chance to see the, the the burglars. You got a chance to see the robbers. You got a chance to see the hustlers. You got a chance to see the kingpins and the pet hustlers. You got a chance to see the, the nine to five workers. You got a chance to see the entrepreneurs, the people who got real estate and own their own business. You got a chance to see this in the hood. So as you, as you started coming up in the hood and you started to choose what you wanted to do and what, what 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 crew, you know what I'm saying, start picking your interest. When you got a chance to do that, you start learning the best ways to do that. Mm. Because the people who are doing it is doing it at a high level. They're gonna teach you on a high level. You see what I'm saying? Even if you said, Oh, I don't wanna do this no more, I wanna do this right here. You know what I'm saying? You still got with somebody who taught you that. You see what I'm saying? So you learn these morals, you learn how to do stuff, what not to do, as you start coming up and you got a chance to see it and experience it. You know what I'm saying? With help. <clears throat> they don't have that now. I ain't gonna lie, bro. That just must be in Atlanta DNA, cause that's some Atlanta. Mm -hmm. They weren't teaching us shit. <laughs> like not be selfish up north, right? Or, it all depends on. And, only I, way you I learn to get your ass whooped. Well, you might see, get shot or locked up. I can't speak for everybody because there's some people that don't go through that. But that's okay. I'm gonna just say it like this. Okay, I just say hustling. Mm -hmm. All right. Everybody hustle in my projects, so mm -hmm. ain't no ain't no way to ain't nowhere to. Say I'm finna go just hustle right here, right? Cause somebody is trapping right there. You see what I'm saying? So when you buy something for somebody, you gotta have somewhere to sell it at. So nine times out of ten, the person that you buy it from is the person that's gonna give you the game. Mm. You see what I'm saying? And you know you are gonna pick up from what's going on around you, but that's the person who's gonna give you the game. And then to you, oh I ain't messing with you no more for whatever reason it is. And I start shopping with him. Now I'm gonna start being around him. Mm. He gonna start giving me the game. So now after I went through this four five four five years in a row, I done been about four five OG in the hood. I got all the fucking game. Mm. Now I know how to do this, 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 and this. These young don't have that. They don't get a chance to have that. Mm. They looking at Instagram. They looking at social media. They going by where they hearing the music. That's how they interpret it, what's real and what's not. They don't get a chance to get shown this. Mm. And then the people that examples they got, but I don't stand no morals. Look at all this shit that's going on right now. It should have never gone on back in my days. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? When I was coming up, you not. When I was coming up, people started saying snitches get stitches. You see mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And the people that I used to be around, we didn't understand that. Yeah. Cause we used to always hear all rats must die. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So I done been around and started seeing it shift and the change and all this that been changed from the old to the <clears throat> fun Atlanta to the new Atlanta. Nah, you're right. It's like, cause I mean, that's worldwide to be honest, bro. Cause even down to like revenge, right? And I, like I'm not proud to say this, but like because we were just having a conversation yesterday with Trap about like the standard and how all of this shit is fucked up. To be honest, right? It is. But like even like revenge, like now it's about smoking on a, yeah, somebody low, right? Yeah, yeah. Smoking on the person that they they got rid of. When I was coming up, bro, and I'm not even like a street. I just was born in a pro. I'm not even yeah. a street. But that. Was not even heard of. Like my own, I never forget. My uncle told me. I think I was like eleven years old. Some, I think we got jumped or something. It was like, cool. Don't worry about it, chill out. We might chill out for six months. Don't say nothing about it. We catch them when they least expect it. This was like what we was coming up to. Like so, when I'm hearing like like you smoking on like it's hot. Like yeah, need the ops coming up. Like nah, you ain't even ain't no ops. It's cool. Like that's what I was taught. Like cool, we got it. Yes, but this. Before the transition, mm. because it was a transitional period. Now, what I can say is, you're totally right. But I always like to play devil advocate in all the situations. Mm. Because I feel like a lot of times people forget situations that the person that they used to be. Mm -hmm. And I always I never forget the person that I used to be. <coughs> and the same, these same youngins who people talking about, mm -hmm. I used to be one of these same kids. Mm. You see what I'm saying? So so 
at the same time, we didn't have no social media. Facts, yeah. We didn't have no way to goddamn taunt our ops. Yeah, it facts. Was, it was no way. That's a fact. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But if you in the club or something, they over there, you're going to have your little words that you're going to say or something. It's going to be something, some kind of ton. If we'd have had social media, we would have been doing it. You know what's funny? <laughs> Somebody else told me that, and I think that's like, I think that's just some real street mentality because, again, like, <clears throat> I feel like Baltimore is a city where, like, even if you're not the, the most street, you got it in your blood. Like, mm -hmm. that was me. Like, I wasn't, again, I'm not. If you're from a project, it's in your DNA. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? You have no choice but to be. But hearing you say that, because somebody else told me that, and I'm like, okay, but I probably would never understand that because I never really lived that life. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I just was there. I'm trying to get the out. I, from the beginning, I was trying to get out. But I say that to say, because, like, somebody else said, they was like, man, you tripping. Like, if we had the internet, we'd probably do the same shit. Like, because I was, like, in my mind, I'm thinking, like, doing this shit on the internet is goofy. Like, ain't no that's talking all this about to be about nothing and he was like yeah you crazy like no they they want their stripes like they the niggas that's gonna do it the first the we, most we been we was already taught that mm. but you can go down if you know better you can go back and listen to all my music and hear all my beefs mm. all of them if you know you're gonna be like oh shit. oh shit. and then even before then i was doing this songs on and i was saying everybody name like mm. I got a lot of diss songs out. Like, if I got into it with you back then, I dissed you. Mm. Like, you're by name. I mean, actually. And I ain't, I ain't never been dissed by name. Going straight into that, that's a great transition. It's funny because Drewski made a skit mm -hmm. about, like, back in the day, how, like, <clears throat> all the gangsters was like the niggas that dance and make the, mm -hmm. the crazy dance songs. How did that, like, how, how, how did that happen? Like, how did the, the dance music, come into play with this, like, how did street get into that type of music? I don't even understand that. <clears throat> um, it really wasn't. I really the first of my kind. Mm. It really wasn't. But it still was a, a genre of... Not before me. But even if it wasn't before you, because I don't know the dates. But I'm, general, was, I'm not speaking, I'm not speaking, like, general, because I don't know what... Yeah. Every city or town got going on because everybody got underground music. Mm -hmm. Before us, the people who danced wasn't the gangsters. The gangsters was the people who danced in the 80s. Mm. When, the, when the 90s and the late 90s and early 2000s coming, gangsters wasn't dancing no more. Yeah. It was, they were scraped back against the wall. I remember this. Selling drugs. You know like, what yeah. I'm saying? It wasn't, no, it wasn't no more. If you dance, it wasn't nothing but the crazy and the dance. Mm -hmm. When you go to the club, that's it. You see what I'm saying? It was a transitional period. You know what I'm saying? Like back growing up, it was cool to dance when we was little. It was cool to do the Humpty Dumps, the MC Hammers, the Michael Jackson, all the, you know, all the dances. That was cool when we was young. You know what I'm saying? But then we started getting older. Nobody was dancing no more. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? I, me and my homie, my homie Dow, uh, rest easy, my dog Seven, uh, we was gangsters. But we used to, so we used to get geeked up all the beans and shit, mm -hmm. and we just have fun. And we just dance, gangsters boogie. Like we, the music come on, we get to just get to doing. Shit. We weren't scared to be who we was. So when the music, when I started doing music, I used to just dance. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I didn't have no problem with it. I never seen a difference in between the different because I always knew who I was. Mm. So it's a different when they don't really know who they is or they trying to portray an image that they don't know. I've been being up since I've been little. I've been with this shit since I've been little. Mm -hmm. Since anybody can ever remember me from any time in their life, they're going to always say, he always been on that. Mm -hmm. So it ain't no faking no facade with me. You see what I'm saying? I'm cool and comfortable with who I am. So what, you telling me, the f them franchise boys, they was the first of the, like, snap and pop? They weren't over dancers. No, nobody in my group danced. I danced. So this is the thing about it. They were just doing it because the dance became popular. You know what I'm saying? See, if you if you be for real, on some for real, like, Franchise Boys wasn't even on Lean With It, Rock With It. Mm -hmm. And it was already the number one song in Atlanta. So wait, they wasn't on? No. We talking about before it hit mainstream? Yeah. Okay, okay. They wasn't on it. It was, no, it was already <clears throat> mainstream. I guess it was like Southern though. But it was already the number one song in Georgia, mm -hmm. both radio stations. So I had Lean With It, Rock With It, and Oh, I Think They Like Me Remix playing at the same time. 
But I'm not on OI like they like me. Because I quit the group. So I quit the group like three times. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So most of this stuff that was happening, then you got to think, all this shit happened in like a three-year span. Like all this shit happened in like a three-year span. White T, oh, I think they like me. Lean with it, rock with it. Well, White T came out in 2003. It officially came out in 2004. That's when, like, the world okay, heard it. All right. <clears throat> oh, I think they like me got recorded in 2003. It was on our first album that we dropped in 2004. Lean with it, rock with it got recorded in the 2004, the end of 2004. But it didn't get released until 2006. Mm. You see what I'm saying? V103 still played the original version of Lean with it, rock with it. And it was me, all of my artists. Mm. See, because I produced Lean With It, Rock With It. You know what I'm saying? So I came up with the whole the whole term, the dance, the name. I, I came up with all that before we even recorded the song. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And I just put all my artists on there. And I was just like, I'm going to put out, dude, I'm going to do like Wu-Tang be doing shit. I'm going to put all my artists on get on one song. I'm going to just have to promote all my artists. Because all my artists were like the hottest art acts in the pool palace and the club we used to go to. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Now, when I got one of my homies, uh, Shawty Black from Trout Squad, he was he had another group. They from the West Side too, but they had a hot group too. You know what I'm saying? And I went to put him uh, on the song, and they produced the name with Book. Book is my homie Pimpin' in my group who produced. They cousins. You know what I'm saying? So I got Book to make the beat. You know what I'm saying? So man, when I got there, all of us got there. So I just said, "This the idea." I'm gonna put some snaps in it. And then me and Book was going back and forth, like, they ain't gonna put no soft ass snaps in there. Goddamn. I'm like, this ain't your shit. It is. Mm. I'm telling you what, like, we went back and forth about it. So the original <clears> version of <throat> Lean with a Rock with it got uh, claps on the hook and it got snaps on the verses. Mm. See, that's how we that's how we changed it. But and when we end up redoing it, and I put the franchise boys on it, we should end up putting the snaps all throughout it. You see what I'm saying? So it's crazy because even back then, I guess, even with coming up with the the snap music, even with then it was like kind of like still new, like we wasn't really rocking with it. But see, because it wasn't <laughs> snap music. I don't see the term snap music came from like the RIAA, the record results and stuff, because in like in 2004, it was like five or six songs, top 10, all of them had snaps in it. David Banner whispers, the David Banner song he had, the uh, Yin Yang Twin whisper song, our song. Uh, Laffy Taffy, uh, Cherish, uh, Lean With It, Rock With It. Who? Uh, Fabo was? In D4L. D4L, okay. You know what I'm saying? So all these songs is out at one time, and all of them had snaps in it. But this not snap music to us. We call it pool pattern music. You oh. know what I'm saying? We don't call it snap music. That's just that they just named so it. So the that. labels did this? Yeah, the labels did that. But I see... Artists have arguments about like who created because it ain't it's not a, it's not a, it's, that's why I'm telling people you know what I'm saying like when it comes to this and I mean it humbly can't nobody tell you more about this than me because I was here from the get go mm. I, I, we are the reasons we are the reason and not just here we are the reasons we want to be rappers we are the reasons we want to be producers before us. What didn't want to be producers and rappers? My, if you was rapping to produce, your family did it. You was just gifted. You, I've been knowing she was gonna do that since he was a kid. I didn't do that shit before. You talking about worldwide or just period? Like, eh, Kanye West was wanted to be a rapper when he was a producer. He's a different one. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Other than those who already is gifted, who already, I know I want to be a producer. I was in the band. I was making beats. I've always been musically inclined. Mm -hmm. After us, street start getting labels. Mm. Dope boys start picking up microphones. Who who went to college? Who 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 was who know the street? Who front of projects became A and R's because these crackers were scared to go to these projects. We changed everything. Mm. These facts. These facts. So let me ask you this: So if Franchise Boys wasn't even on the original songs, mm -hmm. how, how did they form? See, we was already together. See, okay, so. I know Buddy. It's me, Buddy. Rest easy, Buddy. Buddy died of cancer in 2019, too. So rest easy, Buddy. It was me, Buddy, Pimp, and the Jizzle Man. All right? All of us from projects that don't get along. All right? None of our projects get along. Buddy hangs with two of guys from my project, my homie Danielle and my homie Ray Sean. You know what I'm saying? And they play sports with Buddy. 
You know what I'm saying? They was like on the sports side. So I used to go hoop with them because I, I was a hoop star. You know what I'm saying? So we used to go play play for money every well. And, my, and Buddy didn't hoop for real. So they would come pick me up, and me and my homie, my homies from our projects, just go play three on three and shit for money. Yeah, that definitely was a project thing. You know what I'm saying? That, yeah. yeah, but I used to travel all over Atlanta and do this mm-hmm. shit. Five on five, two on two, the one on one. Yep, yep. I used to play hot sauce, spider, and one. Yeah. Them niggas know what's going on. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? For sure. So um, that's how I met Buddy. So that's how I met Buddy for the relationship. I met Pimp. During high school, because we played on the same varsity team in 11th grade. Give me years with, with so this song. Is, so, <clears throat> are you making music? Are, are nah, you? I never wanted to be a rapper. Okay. Never okay. thought about it. Never tried to. I still don't even really call myself a rapper. I just do it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, this is like 2000. 2000. So this is what we're doing. So, um, I'm I'm hustling already. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I'm already hustling in 10th grade. I'm just, that's what I do every day. You know what I'm saying? So I didn't want to play sports no more. You know what I'm saying? So coaches would come to my projects and like Coach Frazier always, he had an ice cream truck and a, um, like a barbecue grill truck where to sell the food and shit. He was always come to my projects and tell all the dope boys like, hey man, tell him he need to come to practice and tell him he need to do this. You know what I'm saying? And it, by this time, I'm like 15. I'm like, fuck this shit. I don't want to. Ain't that too shit too much. I don't want to do that shit. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But 11th grade, I said, I'm going to play basketball because I actually leave school and just go to basketball practice. You know, football, you got to go summertime practice, mm-hmm. two a day. I don't see, I wasn't doing none of that shit. I'm mm. trapping. Like, I ain't I ain't got time to do none of that. So I played basketball. In 10th grade, I did a, um, I did a, um, everything in my life has been predicated off of me trying to hustle. Mm. Everything that I have received in my life comes from me <clears throat> trying to hustle. Side, sidebar, we're going to get back to the franchise boys, but rumor has it you were one of the, the creators of the two for five. Yeah. Two for, was two two for five. five? Yeah, I was the first nigga in the city with two for five. That's crazy. That's how, that's, how I became, that's how I became known in the streets. For real? Like, that's how I became like, that's how I became known everywhere. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? That's how I've been known everywhere. You know what I'm saying? So it started with like all this shit kind of tiny. It started when I went to college. Boom. So I go to college. I meet Pimp. I do this do this song in 10th grade. I do this a cappella. Do language art festival. You don't go to language art festival, you don't gotta go to four period. Four period is lunch. So it's an hour and a half. Everybody project niggas skip lunch and go to the project and back my high school dug and go to Dixon Hill and go smoke weed until lunch over there come back to class. I used to want to serve everybody. So I did this shit to skip lunch. Mm. Boom. School go crazy. Skip the lunch. I do what I need to do. Now everybody wants me to rap. So all the niggas who do music and beats like rap, rap. Oh, I ain't fucking starting that shit. I ain't trying to do none of this shit. 11th grade come. We're doing basketball. Pimp would beat on the lockers. And I rap this. I rap the, my verse. And everybody be singing. And she like Sunset Park. Mm. You know what I'm saying? All year. So I'm still ain't tripping. So Pimp would say, come on my house. So I say, you buy some weed from me. He'll buy some weed and we'll skip school, go to his house. He was selling tele- cell phones and shit, turning on them next tail, chirps and shit. He was turning them bitches on and shit. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so that's how me and Pimp formed a relationship. Like I'm telling you, Pimp is from Allen Temple. We beef. Nobody in my nobody from my project has ever hung with nobody from Allen Temple before me. The projects that that Buddy is from, we war with them. Like, you can't even be, don't even get seen at the gas station over here. They've been chasing us since I've been not eight, nine, ten years old. You see what I'm saying? But I formed a relationship. So all this shit is kind of slick, weird to me at the time. So boom, 12th <laughs> grade, I had to go to, I had to go to school. I went to school from eight in the morning to eight at night, my whole 12th grade year. Just to graduate. You was behind? Yeah. Yeah, that, yep. You know like doing Twilight school shit. Yeah. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So I did that. So by me doing that, I can't play no sports. You know what I'm saying? But I want triple because I like I just want to graduate. It's just my mind's always been like a little different. You know what I'm saying? So, buddy, my homie, two homies, Danielle and Ray, who I started to hoop with, they graduated before me. So they go to the HBCU called Barbara Scotia in North Carolina. It's like 10 minutes away from Charlotte. Mm. So they back home, they like, come to school. I'm like, nigga, fuck school. They're like, man, you ain't doing nothing else. You know, they they positive. So I always got an ear for positive shit. So I'm like, I go up there, I ride up, they like, just ride with me, ride up there with us. So I say, uh, 
I ride with y'all if y'all smoke weed with me. That was my dilemma. They said, okay. So they, this is their first time smoking weed. So we smoke weed. I ride up there with them. I'm walking to school. They go up there. You know how you put your classes in, what you want to take prior. Mm -hmm. I mean, after when you come back to school. So I'm walking. You know, eight, every HBCU is on the projects. Every HBCU in the United yeah. States of America is mm -hmm. in the projects. Mm -hmm. I'm walking. Or in the hood. And, not necessarily the projects. But same yeah, the difference. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So nigga walk up on me, ask me if I got some weed. Said, yeah, I got some weed. So I give him a nick. He give me $10. So, you know, I, I, he gave me the $10, you know, I put the money in my pocket, you know, I brought my bum, I put my bum in my pocket, but the guy walked off on me, mm. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so now I'm like, so I asked one of the guys who went to school that was for us, like, hey, what DC is right here? He like, these dimes up here, and they don't got green weed like that. Well, you'll sell out. I walked to the front and signed up for college. Mm. Got three scholarships. <laughs> That's how I got to college. Damn. You know what That's I'm saying? That's crazy. So we, so we go home, we come home for the summertime, I do my summertime thing. Now it's time to go back to school for orientation. So take it. 12th grade, pimp, pimp and leaves my high school and go to another school on the west side. So I don't see him at all and take it. I told you he's from another project, so I don't talk to him, I don't see him or nothing. First day of orientation, go get all my class and stuff. I'm walking down the sidewalk, uh, walking to the dorm uh, and see the window up here, a beat playing. So now every time I hear a beat playing, I'm rapping this verse. But you got to think. This is at a time, ain't no such thing as instrumentals. Yeah. If you hear instrumentals, it's somebody's song. Yeah. So every time I hear an uh, instrumental, I start rapping this thing to it. So I'm walking, and I'm rapping it to it. I'm like, oh shit, who the fuck is this shit? So I walk in the, walk in the dorm, walk to the door, I walk in the room. Pimp's in there with his back turned. He turned around, he like, what the fuck? I'm like, yeah, nigga, I'm in college, nigga. That's the first That's thing crazy. I said. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So he's like, oh shit, I'm like, remember that song? He like, yeah. So I said, let's record it. Damn. So we recorded it right then. And that Damn. song. Can you get my phone for me? That's so And that song is the biggest underground hit on the west side. Hands what, down. What song was this? Money. It's called M-O-N-E-Y. Damn. This is crazy. Mm-hmm. No, huh? Take it. Just in case uh uh Mark you sent me. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So but wait. So y'all together, right? Because he a part of the franchise boys. No, ain't no franchise boy yet. Okay. But he is he a part? Of yeah, y he's the producer. Okay, but when you make Lean With It, Rock With It, uh, original. Mm -hmm. Um, now what was the song that you said they wasn't on that? Lean With It, Rock With Lean It. Lean With It, Rock With It, and that's mm -hmm. going up. That's going crazy in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. You got your artists on there. Mm -hmm. At what point are you like, I right, I want my homies on there? Like that? How how did they form from that? Okay, so we, <clears throat> JD asked us what was going on with us because we were signing Universal. So you were signed to Universal before yeah. Franchise Boy even... No, nah, us, we signed Universal, Franchise Boys. But so, before this, though, I'm assuming the song yes, that's playing... White T got us the deal. But even before... You said the songs was playing in Atlanta before y'all yeah, even yeah. was Franchise Lean with Boys. A rock, no, Lean With a Rockwood was playing. Yeah, you but Lean saying? With a Rock With It. But I wasn't... Even, I, but nah, it was That white, wasn't... You wasn't on that one. Yeah, I wasn't on Lean With I wasn't on All I Think They Like Me. So we had White T, All I Think They Like Me, and then Lean With It. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I Which was, one was first? Before White the deal. T. White T was the deal, the one that got us the deal. You was on. But Money was the song that got us popular. Money. Yeah, the song I told y'all recorded in college. In college, okay. That got us popular. Okay. Like, that's the song that blew up in the whole city of Atlanta. I don't give a damn what side you went to. Every fucking project, every project club was playing my song. Okay. You see what I'm saying? So I started but doing But this was just your song produced it was just my by, song, by your Produced man. by Pimp. Okay. It wasn't no group yet. Okay. But Buddy was my roommate in college. So Buddy was my roommate. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I would make Buddy give me a whole bunch of concepts and I go rap. I never went to class. Mm. You see what I'm saying? So when we came home, the song ended up being big. This is in 2002. Mm -hmm. That's when I went to college. <clears throat> when we came, Pimp came home in uh, November for Thanksgiving. He didn't come back to college no more. He just stayed. He said that shit wasn't for him. I, we came back. Everybody else went back. Springtime, we recorded White T. The song. We you win the producer. Me, buddy, me, buddy, and pimp. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Cause pimp pimp is the producer, but he rap too. Okay. So he on all the songs too. Okay. So me, buddy, and pimp, we all three went to college. We record White T. We didn't meet Jizzle, our fourth member, until we came back from college. But even before y'all but when y'all record because you was just a rapper, are you No, are I wasn't rapping. No, I'm saying you did the money song. Yeah. But you was just rapping on your man on your man beat. Mm -hmm. Are you are you like, yo, 
we always together, let's rap, or was they rapping too? No, nobody was. No, well, Jizzle was rapping, but I didn't know him. I made Buddy rap. Okay. I was just like, shit, well, you got to rap too. Shit, you make me come to school. Okay. Well, you got to rap too. You know what I'm saying? And we used to, Buddy used to give us a lot of concepts. Mm. Like, Buddy is the one who came up with the concept of doing the White T song. I just wrote the hook. Mm. You see what I'm saying? But so that's how it, that's how it started. It was just organic. Pimp, Pimp wasn't trying to rap. He was just producing. Mm. You see what I'm saying? But when he came home and he had nobody to record, he started recording with Jizzle. Mm. So when we came back home from college and we go to Pimp House to record, that's when we met Jizzle. Okay. So okay. this is like in the end of 2002, <clears throat> like criminal time and shit. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? We go back to school, you know, the beginning of the year. I don't come back home until to uh, spring break. You know what I'm saying? We record YT on spring break. Go back to school. I come back home. Summertime 2003. My song is the hottest song in the streets. Mm-hmm. So now I'm doing shows for my song. So we would do three songs. This song called We From The A, YT, and my song Money. Money. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? I go back to school. First, first semester of my sophomore year. You know what I'm saying? By the time I come back for by the time I come back for Thanksgiving, by the time I think I come back for Thanksgiving, I'm trying to see I got kicked out. So I'm trying to see when I got kicked out when I came back. Nah, I didn't I was always coming back. So I came back every Wednesday and Friday. I was trapping. Me and my homeboy D. Shout out to my homeboy Big D. My homeboy, he'll take me in the car. He's gonna drive back every time. Mm. So now the white the pool palace is playing white tea and and money both in the club. So now I got the two hottest clubs and songs in the club. Did you notice in North Carolina? Well, of course you was coming back on Wednesdays and Fridays. You uh-huh. But in North Carolina, are you in it? But that's what no, that's what made me know I had a hit song because I would perform at all the HBCUs, Riley State, John C. C. Smith. I was just going to all the HBCUs to their talent shows and all us, all the people from Atlanta, and Miami, will go with us and we'll go perform the song. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And that's how I start seeing a response like, well, that song hard as hell. But I had already kind of knew it because everybody was trying to get me to record the song when I was in 10th grade. But you got to think, I'm in college now. This shit, like, it's like two and a half, almost three years ago. Mm. It's a different span. You know what I'm saying? But now the songs are, they are moving. Shit. Wait, they wanted you to record the same songs? Like, so you've been at these songs. I told you I did this. I did the verse. and I did When the, he's beating on the locker? Yes, I did. It was an acapella. Damn. You know what I'm saying? But the crazy part about it is, I think my... My first verse got like 24 bars because mm. I didn't know how to, and it, it really wasn't a rap song because I didn't do it over beat. I just kind of like, it was kind of like a poem, kind of like a poemish type shit. You know what I'm saying? And um, so the shit then, later on, I got kicked out of college like two months after then, we got a deal. So what, like, how fast. did that happen? I know back in the day, like, nigga would just pop up at, at an artist's door and be like, hey, I want to sign you nah, talented nah, and shit. Nah, it was, like, our shit just, it was a little different. Coco Brother is a, he was a radio host on the radio, 107.9. Coco Brother was the first person to go into middle schools and doing pet rallies. Like, everybody do them now. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, shout out to Lil Bankhead. Lil Bankhead doing them a lot too now. But Coco Brother was the first person doing that. And Coco Brother was going to like project schools. He wasn't just going to regular, he was going to like project cool, like the nigga schools. So you got to thank the time White T was out, throwbacks were real popular. So that's why we say fuck a throwback. Because I used to buy shit. The jersey, throwbacks. right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I used yep. to buy fucking, that's all I used to have. Yeah. You know, throwbacks. With the big patch. Yeah, yeah yep. for sure. Mm-hmm. So, damn, I'm my old nigga. Shit. <laughs> I, re- cause I really remember this shit. Like, yeah, I remember the throwbacks. Yeah. <laughs> So he had a it had to have the, the certain patch or your shit got was fake. For sure. Yeah, fact. Your shit was fake. Yeah, you know? yeah. So he had a middle school on Bankhead. So Coco Brother in there doing his thing. So he take his jersey off and he had a white t shirt up on up. And all the kids start running around screaming, Yep, mm-hmm. and my white T. Yep, and my white T. Like the whole school and Coco Brother, like, what the fuck is this shit? You know what I'm saying? So he called Moot B from D4L and uh, linked us up, linked us up with Raheem. You know what I'm saying? And uh, shit, we got the song on the radio. Yo, how did at, and during that time, how was that when you get signed? But I know back then, like they wasn't, it was really fucking artists when it comes to the money shit. Mm-hmm. How, like, how did that happen? Did did did, did they did they own y'all shit or no? Nah, uh, well, you know, it, it, when you contract your deal, it's going you're gonna always have a a clause in your deal where it's gonna be like, okay, you get you get this deal, and we we gonna own your masters for twenty years, twenty five mm-hmm. years, thirty years. Everybody go went through that. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That's why you hear the artists now, like, up two more years, I get my masters back. Up three more years, I'm up this year, I get my masters back. 
You see what I'm saying? Because it be clauses in your contract like that. So everybody get a clause like that in their contract. But as far as money wise, I ain't never had a bad contract for real. You see what I'm saying? You got to think. Our first deal, we got half a million dollars, and they gave it to us. Like uh, advance for for our album. Like okay, they gave us half a million. So our first deal was half a million, but the label didn't control our budget. We had the whole half a million. Mm. So we spent on what we wanted to spend on. But you got to think, me and Pimp do the producing. Mm. So you want no producers to pay. Yeah, you get half. You get like the producers get like half. Yeah, yeah. Of, you know what I'm saying? That up front. Bro, I, I think we spent, I think we spent a total of like fifty thousand dollars on the album. Mm. It's like recording it, mastering that shit, paying producers and everything. Out of five hundred thousand. They well, they took seventy five thousand for White T, the promo for White T, and gave us to four hundred twenty five thousand. Mm. So we had four hundred twenty five thousand in the bank account at eighteen, nineteen years old. Divided by four, right? Yeah. But they was just for the album. They wouldn't count show money and shit. Mm. But then you got to think, I never really gave a fuck about music money. Right. I never really cared about music. Yeah, I so never wanted come to up be for music. You. Yeah, yeah. You see what I'm saying? I was always in the street. Bro, when we first started doing shows, they would come get me. i say, here I come. i walk in the front door, out the back door, and just tell my homie to call me when they leave. Mm. Because me leaving... The money that I was leaving wasn't, the money at the show was enough money for me to leave. So wait, Parley, you sent me and tell me. You want to sit up here on my platform and tell me that Soldier Boy wasn't first. No, Soldier Boy ain't thought of. <laughs> Soldier Boy wasn't the first one to do it. I mean, Soldier Boy ain't thought of. So, but Soldier Boy got the whole swag from Bankhead. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I don't even think he ever been to Pool Palace before. Damn, that's crazy. So, y'all came out before D4L? Yeah. Came out for everybody. We had White T, or oh, I think they like me, and lean with it, rock with it. Before anybody from my side of town, anybody you ever heard of from Snap Era had one song. We had three. Damn. Before anybody had one song, I was there. I was there when D4L D4 was from my projects. Shotty Lowe's from my projects. I grew up watching Shotty Lowe. Shotty Lowe was like the Frank <laughs> Lucas's of my project. You know what I'm saying? So I played basketball. I knew it trapped against low. Like, I've been knowing low since I've been a youngin'. You see what I'm saying? So this ain't nothing new. I know low personally. You see what I'm saying? He grew, I grew up watching this nigga. Shop boys are from our project. We grew up with each other. You see what I'm saying? Like, these ain't no niggas who I just, like, I've been knowing these niggas. I know their mama, their daddy, their sister, brother, who they had a baby with. I, all this shit. Like, this ain't no rap shit. Bro, even that is like, it just, it just blew me. Cause it went over my head, but I know better. So it's going people gonna judge me, whatever. I forgot Shorty Low was even in D4. Like, because I'm yeah. so used to like Shorty Low is his single career is because when Shorty Low ended up coming, he had just ended up getting out of jail. You know what I'm saying? And then he was recording the song and one of his songs took off. So niggas just start saying, Low, you need to rap. Low never really wanted to be a rapper. Low very first rap song you ever heard was with me. It was Money Remix. That song mm. I told you I did, yeah. I did a remix with d 4 well. This is when Fabo just became part of d 4 well. See, I remember d 4 well before Fabo was even part of it. So d 4 well was before? No, they was Friday. a label. Okay. They wasn't a group. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So when the label first started, it was them, my big brother Hard and all Brasky, Front Street, Tip, and Duke Boy. All these niggas are from my projects. See, Stuntman is from Hollywood Road. Stuntman is Charlotte Lowe's sister, husband. You see what I'm saying? And Fabo is from Bankhead Court. The projects that they from, we beef with them niggas. My project beefs with every fucking, every project street on the west side. My hood beef with them. Nobody don't like us. We like the nobody fuck with them niggas type niggas. Mm. You see what I'm saying? So I remember this shit. Music is what brought niggas together. When we started popping and they, we seen we got a deal and we got another hit song, and then everybody started doing music. Now everybody's doing songs with each other. So now I'm coming to your project to do a song. It's cool. You see what I'm saying? The music brought niggas together. It wasn't the streets with the music. Damn. You see what I'm saying? I'm curious now, because it sounds like Atlanta always had a music, like a, a fingerprint on music. Mm -hmm. But the rest of the world just got it late. How did this form through the your perspective because in my perspective I'm thinking oh shit T.I. and these niggas just came out and just Atlanta just blew up 
But it sounds like even to the stories of like 02 and 2000 and before that, it sounds like niggas, yeah. yeah, like even niggas been then. had their own little bubble of music. It just ain't pop yet. It's just, it's a, it's size of town. I didn't make music for nobody else. I make music for the pool palace. I didn't give a fuck <laughs> if nigga on the east side like my shit rough a fuck. I didn't care. As long as a nigga right down pool palace on in the bankhead court, the bluff, got them Simpson Road, as long as they fuck with my shit, that's all I cared about. The pool palace was a club or? Pool palace was a club. That was the club everybody got their start in. Damn. Young Ralph, DJ Unk, fucking uh, 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 Charlotte Lowe, F- Flabo, us, motherfucking, everybody got their start in that bitch. Young Jock. I, listen, if you want to if you want to make it out of Atlanta, you got to bring your shit through the West Side. I don't give a fuck. It's still like that to this day. Mm. I don't give a fuck what nobody say. Always been like that. Even back to the time you talking about late 90s, early 2000s. If you came to Atlanta, you had to go perform at the Bounce. That's what is the bank now. You can't be a street rapper and don't come to Atlanta and go to Bankhead and perform at the bounce. It's impossible. You can't. You know what I mean, nigga? I got the ass whooped at the bounce. Change took. I can tell you so many rap niggas. Oh, my God. Change snatched off the stage, but it's like you fucking got to go there. Mm. Or you ain't no street nigga. You see what I'm saying? After then, it was the pool palace. Nigga, we had rap niggas coming to the fucking pool palace. Nigga, that shit probably as big as this fucking room, my nigga. Mm. You see what I'm saying? We had niggas coming to the fucking pool palace. Do you know this shit is, this shit is crazy. Like if you you got the beef from here to be like, is this Jermaine Dupree? What the fuck? Mm. Should we rob him? <laughs> <laughs> Should we be cool, bro? You know how many people that I like, only because I seen them come to the pool palace, and I was like, this nigga got balls. Mm. I respect him. This nigga got balls. I respect him. You see what I'm saying? The shit, niggas won, this ain't, no. And then after the pool palace, it was Club Crucial. You cannot come, you cannot be a street artist and perform in Atlanta if you don't go to fucking Club Crucial. Period. We always, then it's the Blue Flame. Blue Flame is the most consistent script club we done had. Period. Magic, Magic, Magic City done took the ups and downs. Mm-hmm. Flame ain't never took no ups and downs. Different day shift to the night shift. Nigga, my side of town is just, we the, we the, we the fucking capital of Atlanta. Mm. Niggas know this shit. See, I can't even challenge. I don't have no clue. Yeah, I don't niggas have, know this shit. I, like I said, what I say? Even the even... niggas who popping now, I came <clears throat> to the west side. They got the song from the west side. Any nigga you name right now, I can give you a west side story of him. Anybody. Give a damn who you name. I can give you a west side story right here. Right mm-hmm. now. Direct old school story. Tell you, man, everybody coming to this side of town. Yo. Let's get back to uh, YT, right? Mm-hmm. So, the remix was actually supposed to be Black T. Yep. So you hear Gucci drop Black T. Never again, because it wasn't Gucci then. It wasn't a Gucci man then. Mm. But he was his name was Gucci Man, but he wasn't Gucci Man. It was a group that was called Never Again. No, you guys, you going crazy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yeah, it wasn't a group. <clears throat> Never again kicked Gucci out of Never Again and left him in Alabama. So they had some they had a problem and Gucci just went solo from there and took off. You see what I'm saying? Mm. So it was it was a there was a group first. You see what I'm saying? So the group dropped Black T. Yep. Gucci wasn't on it? Gucci was on okay. it. Okay. Gucci rapped first on that, if I ain't mistaken. So, they, Never Again drops Black T. Mm-hmm. That's supposed to be y'all remix. I'm yep. thinking y'all planning for this to be the remix. Yeah, yeah. This happens. Like, what's the first thing coming to your mind? Like, what the fuck? Uh, I wasn't tripping on this shit until they said, um, Oh, yeah, they had to be a stain on your white T. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You got to think. I told you I was one of the young niggas that they say now. You know what I'm saying? So, anything breathes my way, I was just... Looking like, for a show. Yeah, I'm like a Belgian melon while I was shit get the moving. So I, I didn't like it. So I you know me. I told you, I come from hip hop too. I'm an 80s baby. You see what I'm saying? Mm. So I, I told you immediately I just started making diss songs. Mm. You gotta think, I was we I was beefing with D for Well too. We st- we in the same projects. I trapped right here, they trapped right across the street, right there. And I'm dissing niggas. Names, the they, they, motherfuckers on YouTube. Yo, how was like, I'm just all right. I'm curious. How was the in my mind again? Because I'm ignorant, right? Uh-huh. But I'm just just, 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 just hear me out. Give uh-huh. me some grace. 
in my mind, this shit sounds crazy because a bunch it's a bunch of dancing niggas, mm-hmm. like in my mind, right? But you niggas is really like from the streets. But if you think about it, it really wasn't no dancing besides the physical dancing that we did to have fun. If you listen to the music, if you listen to the lyrics for real, we never were talking about dancing. Facts. Yeah. See what I'm saying? Yeah, that's a fact. Even if you listen to White Tea, the first fucking lines is, is I slang in my white tea. I bang in my white tea. Yeah, in fact. I'm serving fiends in my white tea. But like, I guess the, the world is I'm saying? It's hard. Like, in the world, well, I'm not going to say the world. Up north is a little different. Niggas is just arrogant. We mm-hmm. we we on our own. We think we run yeah. it. So in my mind, I'm coming from up north. Yeah. I'm like, these dancing ass niggas. There's the perception. It's, e- it's easy to feel like that. Even 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 on lean with it, I say, got to peel pop with me. Go and take a shot with me. Call me Ted. I got grounds. Don't hate nigga. Shot with me. And all the kids saying this shit. Got to peel <laughs> pop with me. Go and take a shot with me. And the parents let them. It's not the music. It's the look. People are. It's that's why it's so easy to trick people now. That's why it's so easy for niggas to do a song and look hard and carry a gun. Nigga like, oh, he's a street nigga. Because of that same fact, I was scared to come out and say the shit that I was doing in my what I was really doing because I thought. I'm gonna go to jail, but them niggas gonna say that shit. Gonna, all that shit gonna be playing in court. I ain't know nothing about the litigation system. I ain't know they couldn't do that. But in my mind, I'm just like, I ain't talking about this shit. I might drop a bar or two. You see what I'm saying? But I ain't really just talking about this shit. Mm. You see what I'm saying? It was a difference with me. You see what I'm saying? And I always been like this though. So did the hood and what I was going to going with was y'all embraced by the hood because I was from the hood, but y'all was making this music, or was people kind of looking at y'all funny because it's like, bro, y'all niggas from the hood. Why y'all making this music? Yeah, no, I've been trans out. Niggas know what's going on with me. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm one of those. I ain't one of them. I'm one of those. That's what I like to tell nigga. I ain't one of them. I'm one of those. I've been like that. You know what I'm saying? I told you, bro, I made it comfortable for niggas to dance in my hood. Me and my homie Daryl. And niggas wasn't like no. niggas just wasn't looking dancing. at your nut? No, we'll beat your ass right now. We'll fight mm. your ass up right now. Which one you and they know it. Mm. Ain't no if, ands, buts, maybes about it. Don't play with them. Respectfully. Ask anybody. I ain't call anybody. DM a nigga. Ask them. Mm. They gonna tell you. Send them this clip and say, what do you, how you feeling? Is it, how you speaking is it, on the shit? It, what is it? Is it cap or... Uh, yeah, is that shit coming off the chest? Is it coming off? They gonna tell you, bro. You know what I'm saying? I just always been me. I don't care about the way people perceive me. I'm a real ass nigga. I know this. You know right. what I'm saying? I, like I say, I, I just know this. <clears throat> okay. We're going to fast forward. I want to talk about the podcast. Mm-hmm. This shit is good. I, this shit is a history lesson. All right, so I got to skip the podcast for a second. Mm-hmm. Knowing that, you ain't really have to play the industry game, right? Because, like, y'all got, and correct me if I'm wrong, y'all kind of got in and, and kind of got out when it came to the music shit, right? Like, y'all was in and out. It was, like, quick. No, nah, really, it's just shit. This shit, shit just happened. Like, shit just happened. But, but the time, no matter yeah. what happened, but the yeah. time, it was, like, in and out, right? Yeah, yeah. Like so you ain't, years, five you ain't years. really... Have to play the industry game. Mm-hmm. No, I didn't. Fast forward years, you know where I'm going with this. Yeah. And you hear this random ass clip of Fat Joe saying, Bro, they got that shit from me. Yeah. What's going through your mind when you see that? No, I understand. Like I say, I'm a real nigga. I don't deal with emotions for real. My emotions come from disrespect. Mm. And so another person for him might do something and don't know it's disrespectful to me. So you have to teach niggas. How to treat you? That's you know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. I uh, I could understand them. You see what I'm saying? I could understand what he's saying. You see what I'm saying? Laying with it, rock rock away. You know what I'm saying? No, I'm just I'm just saying from his standpoint. Okay. Not saying that I agree. Cause I don't. It don't it's sound. Just, it's not. But I'm just I'm just saying that sometimes you have to step in another no, nigga's I get shoes it. Yeah, and yeah. be like, Respect, yeah. How the fuck is this nigga coming? You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, I get it. Yeah. Before I feel away about you. I want to try to understand you. That's some real nigga shit, yeah. Cause yeah, yeah. my response is gonna be different. Yeah, and I like to stand on my responses. Yeah. So before we go there, let me try yeah, to at least let me, give you, yeah, let, let me, me give you some grace first. Let me see what's going on. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's some real shit. Yeah, so yeah. if something happened, I can go to sleep and be like I don't give a fuck. About yeah, hundred percent. This is what it is. Yeah, a hundred percent right. You know yep, what I'm saying? hundred percent right. Yep. But <clears throat> to me, I really didn't hear what everybody else heard. I heard, nigga, you been feeling like this for 15, 20 years. You just found the opening to say something and wanted to dive in the pool. Mm. You emotional. That's how I felt, personally. You see what I'm saying? You could have been saying something about that. You know what I'm saying? And I understand words, because I told you I'm intellectual. I'm an intellect. 
So when you say I can sue means that you did that shit, nigga. Mm. So now you said I'm a thief. You see what I'm saying? See, when it comes to me, it's three things you can't say, four things you can't do. You can't say I'm a thief. You can't say I'm a snitch. You can't say I'm a punk. And you can't say and you can't lie on me. Joe did two on. I tell you, I don't, I don't take that lightly because I take my name serious. Mm -hmm. Any nigga scream my name, bullshit don't come behind my name. I take that serious. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So don't play with my shit. Not even for fans and social media. I don't play on social media. When niggas see me speak on social media, I be dead ass motherfucker for real. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, like I say, I ain't it's a salute to him. I don't feel no way about him or no no ill will towards him. You see what I'm saying? But outside of the nigga shit though, because mm -hmm. what you just said was a bunch of nigga shit. Yeah. And we some niggas. Yeah. <laughs> Again, I'm sorry. <laughs> Excuse my language. But yeah. outside of the, the man testosterone shit, right? Mm -hmm. I'm just curious. I'm picking your brain. Mm -hmm. You might say, fuck no. Mm -hmm. But I'm curious. This is going to sound crazy. No. Yeah. But to hear Fat Joe, mm -hmm. I mean, it is Fat Joe. Mm -hmm. Even speak about what you had going on, it got to show that, nah, we was them niggas. Because if we wasn't, niggas wouldn't. No, niggas wouldn't be talking about it, but, but they talking. You, but you know, for real, for real, I don't need nobody else to validate me. That's true. I look at TikTok, nigga, that's us. Nigga, wouldn't be no fucking TikTok. Niggas make dance songs on purpose because of us. Like, I don't need that. Fruit of Loop is the number one producer program right now because of us. I don't need no nigga to validate me. This. I just told you, niggas start being rapper producer because of us. I don't need no nigga to validate me. Soldier Boy would say it's him, but you see what I'm saying? I like this. This is no, you know, Soldier Boy had the internet. He called the internet way. He the first nigga to do it on the internet. But the way he dressed his glasses, that shit come from us. We birthed that shit before he even came about. The producer program he made on Fruity Loops, he wouldn't want to use that if it wasn't for us using it. Mm. Using snaps in the beat. K Rap was the first nigga to put the snaps in the beat. Shout out that boy K Rap. He wouldn't be doing that shit for us. Corny Cash is the nigga who taught Soldier Boy how to make beats. Corny from Simpson Road. Shout out to the West Side. Shit go deep, bro. Niggas can't trick me. Shout out to that boy Soldier Gambino, cause Soldier Boy got his name from him. Mm. You wanna talk about some? You see what I'm saying? Let's take it back. I know the real truths. This is a history lesson I was yeah. not ready for. This shit is you know crazy. I should have been called you, nigga. Yeah, this shit be. Oh, yeah, this shit is all. This shit is all facts. See, like I say, be no cap. A lot of people try to drown the truth. So I'm just one of the people that if it happened, it happened. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? It's okay to give a nigga a shout out. It's okay to say, you know, if, even if it was your case with Joe, I won't. I won't have no problem with saying, "Oh hell yeah, shit!" I heard Joe's song and it inspired me. Mm. I won't have no problem doing that, dog. I'm a real nigga. You know what I'm saying? I ain't tripping on that shit. My bad, my bad. No, you good. Ain't nothing in my left pocket, man. That shit. On the table. Yeah, yeah, it ain't, it ain't, it ain't no problem to be inspired by a nigga no matter where you from. Damn. You know what I'm saying? So, hell yeah, nah, I don't. I told this you, I'm, I'm one to one, bro. So, what made you do the podcast? Um, I had went viral like four times in three months during I, the pandemic. I don't, don't what? Um, well, one, my first one time one super viral was I did an interview with uh, Off the Porch. Okay, okay. And then, uh, I said, uh, I broke down the difference. You know how everybody say I'm a street nigga. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I broke down what niggas understand and how, what niggas mean by that and how you have to break it down. Like, when niggas say a street niggas, you can be a street nigga, a gangster nigga, a real nigga, a hood nigga. And all four of them are different. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But a nigga say he a street nigga, and he'll be talking about one of those things specific. Yeah. So I just really broke it down. Yeah. And the shit went super fucking viral. You that's know what I'm saying? that's crazy because I never even thought about it. But I, I'm super intentional with my words, like, cause like, I'm from the hood, but I'm not a street nigga. Yeah. Like I, I make sure I keep that mm -hmm. because I'm just not a perpetrator. Like, yeah. never was a street nigga. Never was. Like, but yeah. But see, it's it's, it's different variables in all of them though. Mm. So it makes all of them similar. That's why a nigga can just say, I'm a street nigga. You see what I'm saying? Mm. And all depends on the Explain, situation. Break it down, break it down, break it down. Okay, <clears throat> okay like, uh, a hood nigga just nigga grew up in the hood. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Yep. That's it, mm -hmm. a hood nigga. You know, drug dealing, nigga getting shot, killed, school, nigga getting beat up, cheap shoes, you know, hood nigga, just mm -hmm. product of your environment. So when you see shit, yeah, you ain't fucking you decent to talk to. You know what what you Police to. come, you ain't. Huh, you just like, nigga. I don't seen this nigga. She's a hood nigga. Yeah, yep. you know what I'm saying. Then you got a street nigga. A street nigga is not a hood nigga. You don't have to be from the hood to be a street nigga. Mm. A street nigga is just a nigga who operate in the streets. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying. 
That's just me, nine times out of 10, whatever you're doing, it's informational based or you're selling something to street people. Mm. So even if you got a fucking, even if you got a fucking t-shirt truck, nigga, and, and guess who pulling up and you, you post it on the corner of Bankhead and High Tower, nigga, you could be a street nigga. Mm. You see what I'm saying? If you can indulge information in the street, oh yeah, you know Lil Ray Ray, you, you could be a street nigga. You mm. know, if it's suburban niggas or street <clears throat> niggas. You see what I'm saying? Uh, uh, gangster nigga is, gangster nigga is a, it's a mentality. It's not something that you can physically be. You see what I'm saying? Just because you shoot nigga don't make you a gangster. You see what I'm saying? This is a fact. So, you know, it's a mentality that you have. You know what I'm saying? You can't be a street, you can't be a gangster nigga unless you're smart. So mm. if you're not, if you're not the smartest nigga, you're not the gangster. You're not a gangster. What's a gangster? Uh, you know, in the, in the sense of the term, what nigga mean gangster means, you know, standing on bed and I do something to you. I'm handling my business. I'm, I'm about to shit. I'm gonna pull up. I'm just saying in the word, in the sense of yeah. what everybody, what everybody say. You know what I'm saying? But you can't have all that if you're not smart, because mm -hmm. you ain't gonna go to jail. What's gangster about that? Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Even if you want to get away, it take thought. It take thought process. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? And everybody get we get the gangster shit from you know like the mafia, the mob. You know what I'm saying? All them niggas like. Smart, they went to like Ivy schools, you know what I'm saying? Them niggas uh, extort you, they didn't do your books. <laughs> niggas ain't extorting niggas in doing books, niggas not even that fucking intelligent. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. that's what I mean by that. And I was just like, real niggas don't have to be a hood nigga, street nigga, or gangster nigga. Mm -hmm. Real niggas just a nigga stand on principles and morals. Like, I don't have to agree to your to your principles for me to say you're a real nigga. Mm -hmm. Is that what you feel like? And you standing on that shit mm -hmm. right there? As long as you stand I'm going to say, I, I respect that nigga. <clears throat> if I respect you, I respect you for being a real nigga. You know, it's funny. We talking about, like, in this podcast space, we're simply talking about podcasts, mm -hmm. which is content in general. The real niggas are the ones that can't get canceled mm -hmm. because they stand on it and we know it. For example, Boosie, mm -hmm. right? Boosie, even like Trick Daddy, like, these niggas are people that say, the craziest shit, the most outrageous shit, but mm -hmm. they don't get canceled because they not teetering the fence. They not playing the fence. Mm -hmm. They saying what they saying, they stand on that shit. It's the niggas that don't stand on it, but like be teetering the fence, mm -hmm. that get canceled all the time. That's what I've noticed. Yeah. I don't know. But... No, it is. It's because niggas don't really be about that shit. That's just how you <clears> feel. <throat> okay, so I'm inquisitive as fuck. Now I'm curious. I might just go everywhere. Mm -hmm. Departments. Mm -hmm. What came first, your podcast or Desi Bank shit? Desi came from but but you gotta think I just had a podcast before I had an apartment. So an apartment was my second podcast. So I had OG talk already. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I always, I introduced and did stack five. I did I introduced the word to Big Will. Niggas had never in the world. I know how nigga I know niggas who been knowing who the fuck Big Will was for fucking twenty years. Wait, I never what, seen him. What Big Will? Big Will on the bank. Okay. Probably the richest nigga around that motherfucker, for real. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, <laughs> not, I'm thinking too much. He's he the only black man in the United States of America that got prime real estate by any any any, any, any sports facility. Okay. He got 10 and roses <clears throat> right there by, by the dome. He owned both of the restaurants. And he owned the bank. He got like four roses. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Street nigga from her and her home from right down the street. Michael Jones used to pull up on a nigga every time they came to the city. He a big, he a, he a street nigga, but if you not... In the who's who, you don't know who he is. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So for niggas see him on my podcast, like, what the fuck, nigga? How the fuck did you get Will? Nigga, how the fuck you get Will to sit on the... Niggas fuck real niggas. You see what I'm saying? I got big unk on that motherfucker. And this is on uh, OG, OG Talk. Talk. Yeah, you know, I did like 12 episodes. So what made you shit. do... What made you change it? Because I, OG Talk was for OGs. You see what I'm saying? Everybody know, yeah. Okay. I, that's why I started doing podcasts. I started doing podcasts to talk to young niggas. You see what I'm saying? To so niggas, like I say, when niggas growing up in the hood, you get a chance to get that leadership and guidance from different niggas. Niggas don't get a chance to do that. I say, if I do a podcast, that's what I'm gonna do. I want to get game. I want the niggas to see. But my podcast be like, I just learned some shit. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So that's why I started doing it. And niggas start hearing me like, I want to come on there. But nigga, you not no OG. Mm. So I said, damn. You know what? Shit, I'm gonna just start a podcast for them niggas. So I said, shit, goddamn, you know, that nigga Daisy wrote off my name. So shit. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull the whoop. whoop. I was gonna ask that. So I was because I was gonna ask yeah. about that exchange. Cause if, if the apartments came first from him, we know Parlay is you. Yeah. Was like did he did he talk to you about that or was that no. just the parlay shit? Yeah, no, he was just so I done been around Daisy. Daisy cool. <clears throat> See what I'm saying? I got Daisy line. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I got a whole bunch of friends who I deal with personally who deal with Daisy personally. I got a homie who's around Daisy in every single one of Daisy's skits. Man, this man might be together two, three times a week. You see what I'm saying? It was our respect. You know, I had homies who, like, 
just like, like wanted him to stop. Like, they got to pay you. But I told you I ain't that type of nigga. I was mm. just like, nigga, I ain't tripping on that. anything, nigga, he helped me out. That nigga do a million every clip. Nigga, parlay this bitch around that motherfucker, nigga. Mm. You know I only was asking that because <clears throat> parlay ain't like a... Don't know about uh, nobody average. named Parlay. You know what I'm saying? Like, if a, listen, <clears throat> if somebody named Parlay, they name themselves after me. Even if it was intentionally or unintentionally. Now I'm pull a fat joke. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Even if it was intentional or unintentional. unintentional. <laughs> it's nigga funny as shit. You know what I'm saying? Because it's the, not even today, it's not no name that you just catch a nigga name saying parlay. Yeah, I don't think Nobody I, was parlay before I came out. Nobody. Yeah, I don't think I've ever. No, nah, that's what I'm telling you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. What they know fuck? I ain't lying. They want my name. Did that light just mm-hmm. go dim? Oh, shit. Yeah. I ain't know that shit real. This nigga, <laughs> this nigga turned, <laughs> turned the lights off in this <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> Damn, what the fuck? Well, I, I mean, well, shit, we got to fix this, man. Yeah. This is great. Um, God damn, this is this this is fire. Uh, I appreciate you pulling up. No, for sure, that dog. Uh, damn, legend, like I said, parlay, I mean, shit. And, 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 and that's how you follow him, too, just parlay. Yeah, I am parlay, you know what I'm saying? You know, we're going to kick some real shit, you know what I'm saying? Follow the sports page from the boys, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I definitely got to follow my kids, mm. you know what I'm saying? I don't like Huncho Elite 7v7 page. Man, I appreciate you for pulling that. I don't know what the hell just happened. This shit is, I'm getting tired of this shit. This yeah. shit is, I'm tired yeah, of this speaking shit. Speaking of hot, I like that. Yeah, no, nah, facts. Man, appreciate you, brother, for real. Appreciate you, This dog, shit was great, sure. man. Jay Hill, Jay Hill Podcast is a wrap. We out.